hiking. There we go. All right. Perfect. So go ahead and get going. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess for all of those uh, following, um, we're continuing our, 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 our long, interesting walk down the uh, yellow brick road of Arlang. <laughs> Um, and uh, just kind of for context of where this sits, last week we were uh, working our way through conditions. Uh, Tan led a, a, a kind of a presentation on um, how to how to kind of have have um, stop like a stop condition or an error condition signal kind of what what was the cause of that error condition um, really. Really, in, really short presentation, but really interesting uh, and really interesting article. This is a little bit the uh, kind of the continuation of that. Um, so, whereas last week we looked at uh, how uh, with Arling's abort function, uh, one can in, include the kind of caller uh, um, environment. So that when error messages show, they show the, the kind of the proper, uh, you know, what thing actually failed. Um, now we're going to continue and see how we can do some more of that. And then also, most importantly, include context in the error train so that we can understand uh, better you know, which, which functions are actually error, uh, uh, being the cause of the error and then provide some contextual information that'll help the, the end user of, of the function um, uh, understand maybe at, at what point um, in uh, uh, things failed. So, for example, if we're doing uh, something like a, a map or L apply type operation, if things failed at iteration number four, it would be good for the user to know that that's where the error lies, so that they could they could fix things accordingly. And so, we'll be looking today at at how how to accomplish that. Um, so, uh, it was a little short on time this this week. Um, uh, and and also, I feel like had I prepared slides, it would have just been copy paste from the vignette. So I'll just uh, <laughs> do a live reading, I suppose, of the of, of the vignette, where we'll probably focus mostly on the on the code, the interesting bits. Um, but really, you know, as I was saying, the the overall thrust of this vignette is is to provide developers tools such that when errors uh, errors arise or when kind of conditions occur within um, within the code that uh, the user can be provided in the error messages or in the messages proper context to understand what part in the in kind of the chain of functions is, is uh, in, uh, you know kind of what in what kind of part of the stack to, um, uh, does the call stack to, to, is error arising you know which function is the culprit um, and then and then maybe some contextual information about why that function is is, is failing um, so the starting point for this vignette is, is is a little bit of repeat of of what we saw last week, but I think it's really nice nice motivation um, that you know here when when we're when we're um, thinking about thinking about um, you know error messages uh, uh, let's say that we're accustomed to seeing within the tidyverse, we're really seeing if you break down the error message, we're seeing kind of two types of 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 information. We're seeing uh, a I guess what's what's a, a causal error and then like contextual error, right? So we can see here in the error message and for this block of code, where we have some function that's being executed within a um, a, a dplyr pipeline, uh, we can see that the error occurs in a certain function. So it occurs in the mutate function. That's already helpful to know where the error occurs, um, <clears throat> which argument is the problem. Uh, and then some contextual information. So in the in in the first group. So this is going to be a data frame that then becomes a group data frame. So in the first group of empty cars, um, where cylinder equals four, that's that's where the that's where the error lies. And then this is basically the error, right? Um, that one of the arguments is uh, is 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 not a not a numeric um, argument. So in in short, we want to kind of have the tools that we can provide these nice. I guess tidy error messages are uh, uh, are kind of tidyverse aligned uh, error messages that that will be helpful. So the first part of the first part of the process is kind of as since you know ultimately when we're we're developing functions we may well be utilizing um, other functions so we may have you know some wrapper function that we're creating that that strings together a set of other other functions. And you know, if errors arise, we want the the user to understand where where in that context they arise. And so to do that, 
we, we would want to kind of like capture the error and then kind of, uh, as a vignette says, you know, like re rethrow rethrow the error. Um, so kind of the first real setup is, is this kind of try catch uh, uh, setup. So if, you, if you're familiar with, with, with try catch, you know, in the conditions chapter of, of, of advanced, of advanced R, uh, you know, you, you have this, this, this function that kind of um, uh, will kind of catch a condition, do some, and then and, and do, do some things. And we're going to have something very similar here uh, where we're going to have to, we're going to create some, um, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, chained errors. Um, uh, now, one thing they're interesting here in the vignette is the, uh, this try fetch, which is different than try catch. And it seems like it brings together the best of both worlds of kind of two base functions. So um, uh, here it says, you know, relative to, or as compared to try catch, the base try catch, try fetch, our R lang function, preserves, preserves the context uh, of the error. So try catch will just kind of surface an error, but try fetch will, will provide you some, some, some context uh, of, the, of the error. Um, and then, uh, you have another tool in base R with calling handlers um, that that does provide the proper context, but uh, try try fetch. Uh, I'm not sure I fully fully understood this part. Is able to kind of catch uh, these kind of like stack overflow errors for <laughs> later versions of R. So I guess that's when like your like C stack is, uh, is you know has too much too 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 much is kind of like being piled onto the memory i guess of this c stack um i've, I've definitely seen this error I, i'm not sure i fully fully understand this error but this is something that that try fetch is able to signal to the user uh that at least if the user has a, a more modern version of r uh that um with calling handlers is, is unable to do so so kind of long story short use try fetch uh at least that's what i took away from this um <laughs> So here's try fetch in in action. So let's let's kind of create a, a little function whose whose sole purpose is to kind of catch errors and then then message about those errors. Uh, so we'll call it with with chained errors. It'll take some expression, uh, and then inside of it we'll have try fetch. Um, uh, we'll have the expression, and then uh, if a, if an error condition arises here, then we'll we'll use Arlang's abort uh, to uh, basically print a an error message and, and, and issue an error. So let's let's try to have an error here. Um, so with uh, chain errors, we'll try to add one to a string. That's not a, a defined operation, and so naturally it errors. Uh, he, but here we see, you know, with with error uh, error with chained errors, uh, and then the pro uh, we see our message problem during the step, which is the thing we want. Uh, we can see kind of why the error arose is caused by the error that you can't add these two things together. That one of those arguments is not a uh, is 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 not a, a numeric um, um, uh, storage. Uh, but you know this this is this is kind of a nice little toy example. But typically this is going to this kind of error catching function is going to be used inside of a function that we're writing. So let's place it in its proper proper uh, place. We'll have some function called my verb uh, that that uh, takes an expression, and then inside of it, um, just for kind of um, pedagogical purposes, we'll simply have our, our with chained errors function. And let's let's try again what we did before. So we'll have this function add, which was defined earlier in the vignette, is just a, a function that takes x and y and then adds together x and y, right? Um, so we'll, we'll we'll try to add. We'll try to add together, you know, one and then uh, empty character string, and naturally we're going to see an error. But interestingly, here we're going to see an error that's not quite what we want. Um, so yes, it, it it tells us the nature of the problem that um, you know one of one of the one of the arguments of x or y is 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 not the expected type. We see the error message that abort is throwing. That's good. But then at the very top, we're seeing something that's not particularly helpful. We're seeing the error being attached, uh, kind of. Uh, being linked in effect to with chained errors. So this to our helper function and not to the, the, the global function. So that's not helpful because you know end users don't know, don't know, don't care so much about the inner implementation. They just care that, you know, did my thing work? And they don't know the names of these things. This may not, it's probably won't even be an exported function, right? So they'll be scratching their head wondering what what the heck is this function. So what we instead want to do is have um 
have it be that when, when we perform the same operation, that the error be linked instead to, to kind of the parent function, the my, my verb function here. And so uh, if you followed uh, what Tan um, uh, uh, presented last week, you, you, you'll probably have a strong intuition of what, 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 what to do here. Um, and, and that's simply that we need to pass to this, this uh, error catching function. Um, we, we need to pass uh, a, a caller environment uh, to it. And so that's exactly what we'll do. So we'll make some small modifications uh, to this so that our, 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 our error messages include the function call. So the, 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 the function call of kind of like the parent, parent function, if I could put it that way. So to make that modification or to, to make that happen, we'll make two, two modifications. So for with the with chained errors function, we'll add um, a call argument. Um, and then we'll we'll point it to the caller environment. So the environment um, that is kind of calling this function. So the environment of the function itself. Um, and then you know we'll still have try fetch, have abort as before. And then the additional thing is we'll pass to abort uh, the call, right? Uh, from from this function right here. And the result will be the following: if we if we try to run our our our, our function again in a way that will will error. Um, we'll actually see a better error now. So we'll, we'll see uh, the same kind of contextual information as before, but usefully we'll see that, you know, the error in my verb. So in the calling environment of this with chain function. So it'll name, it'll name the, it'll name not the, uh, the, the error kind of uh, capturing function itself, but instead the, the, the function that's calling um, this error capturing function. Really useful. So you can point, uh, in this way, you can point users in exactly the right direction of where they can uh, where they can start troubleshooting. Yeah. Um, but there's maybe a little bit of a I side. Uh, just wanted uh, to oh, sure mm -hmm. to uh, butt in that I've been I've written a few things that are just like um, I wrote common error handling functions for ah. a package where um, like doing this stuff and it's like so good, <laughs> you know. <it's, laughs> Like I had, I had done some of this at my old job, like really hacky and, you know, not right, but duplicating some of the stuff they do here and just seeing how to, you know, just be basically including that caller environment yeah. or caller mm -hmm. env call thing. Um, and then the ability that I had a case, I'm, I'm trying to find it here, but I had one where like, I actually did have to supply a different call than what it would have naturally used um I, I can't remember what it was but it was like i wanted to put it up another level or something like that right right, so, right 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 um, yeah we're gonna we're gonna come to that one too uh, yeah actually. yeah yeah so but it's, I, very I, useful. I, I i mean for this i i'm really eager to kind of actually so john you you said that you had a, you, you had some of this in a package was it was it just a package of uh error catching functions or was it as part of a package you were catching errors it is not yet a package of error catching functions. It's as part of a package I have. Um, and it's funny. So I really like doing uh, argument checking to, yes. you know, like this is supposed to be a URL, which means it's supposed to be a character. Exactly. It's supposed to be length one. And so I can, like, I have all these standard things in it. Um, and so that's a specific example from this that I'm looking for a URL. So I have a kind of a chain of, checker functions yep those like there should be a package and i can't find one that does quite what i want um i find that some of the rlang stuff i feel like well the vector stuff is a little too strict like i want to coerce if it makes sense mm. to um and sometimes they don't so like if someone gives me one and i need an integer i don't want to throw an error i want to say okay yeah that's what you know treat it as one l mm. um things like that and so um anyway so i don't have that package yet but i have these things inside of a package and they're growing to where i'll probably make the package one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think i think this is kind of um I, I feel like I want to revisit a, a package that I, I, I made where I did a lot of that error, the kind of um, argument checking that you're talking about, Sean. So I, I had, um, you know, for example, providing a URL, exactly what you're saying. And then also, um, I think some components that the user had to provide, well, like a user had to provide was a, 
like a, a GUI that has like a certain a certain form. Um, and you know, I, I wrote some functions to kind of check check that it it is one of those things or you know, some parameters uh, of this particular software, uh, you know, uh, like a, a workspace, uh, workspace name can only be a certain length, et cetera, et cetera. I, 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 I think I'd like to go back and revisit that. I, I, as it stands, like I have some error checking, but I don't think I, I don't think I surface the errors in as useful a way as possible. I mean, you know, I'll probably get this, but then it's going to ascribe it to my checking function, right? Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, being able to, and that, you know, it was something like where in my URL checker, I call my um, it's character scalar checker, which calls my character checker. <clears throat> and so um, being able to pass that all the way up to the actual argument, uh, actual mm -hmm. function where this is supposed to be a URL and don't say it's in the scalar checker, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um but yeah, it's very, it, all this stuff is definitely very useful. I, I am appreciating this stuff a lot. Yep. Especially because um, like figuring out where something was called from is black magic that <laughs> I like that they implement for us. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I was kind of wondering, this is like caller environment thing. I didn't go down, I didn't go down the rabbit hole much or really any, but I'm wondering if it's just kind of like fetching the name of the environment of so like as can't remember exactly, but it's along oh. those lines. Yeah, I'll have to I'll have to look at maybe I'll look at the source code at some point. Yeah. If it's if it's not completely inscrutable, then yeah, maybe I'll no, work it's, back. <laughs> it's using a base it's it's just calling the base function parent dot frame. Oh and, okay. Uh which basically it's parent dot frame two is what it's called, <laughs> which is their rewrite, I guess, of parent dot frame yeah. or yeah. So well, no, 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 parent dot frame with the argument two. Oh, uh, oh, got it, got it. Because you caller env takes an argument that you never or very rarely actually sent set, yep. which is n, and it's n equals one by default, and then it calls parent dot frame parentheses n plus one. So how many? How many? How many like? environments you want to walk back basically yeah right? yeah and by default parent.frame is one so you're okay. doing one higher than parent.frame got it um got it yeah and then i can't remember exactly what parent.frame does but it's basically uh you know just getting the environment from uh you know from where you tell it to go how far cool. up the stack pretty cool um <laughs> which <laughs> sorry parent.frame is a convenient shorthand for sys.frame sys.parent of n <laughs> hmm. okay okay anyway so yeah it's that's getting that's what i you know that's what i mean of this stuff that i'm like wait so you have to know the difference between a frame and a parent and uh and an environment i don't want to have to think in those ways so yep. our lang does it for me yep <laughs> Um, oh yeah, uh, one little, I guess, continuing on this example, like one, there's kind of maybe one corner case we haven't looked at. Uh, so, so far we've been providing something as an argument. So some, some, some expression, but, uh, it's, it's possible that the, that the argument could be missing, right? So in our case, the expression is just not provided. Um, um, and, and because here this, this function is using la lazy, um, kind of evaluation, it, it's, it's going to try to with that immediately and you're, you're going to get this, uh, this function right here so the error will be pointing in the right direction helpfully um but then you're going to get this this error message from 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 abort um that's going to be a little farther down the stack uh, in your error checking function um and then you'll get this generic message that your uh, the function was expecting um an argument expra and and, and, and didn't didn't find one. It was, it was missing, and and no default is is defined in the function, and and so to fix this, there's a simple fix. Uh, there's just a uh, Arlang um, function called check check required, um, and simply you just do check required, and then you'll you'll um, provide the the name of the uh, the argument to to check for. To simply check that it's 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 required. Um, 
and so here you'll you'll what you, what you'll gain is that you're you're not going to continue execution after this stage, right? So so before it, it was kind of let me see if I can find a admin or nice little place where it's showing the function. So before when we provided nothing, the error was you know it wasn't getting caught earlier, and so it was getting caught with our error checking function in a, in a funny way. So now we're we're inserting an, another error check uh, that that's looking for 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 missing missing arguments directly, um, and then emitting an error if 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 the if that argument if the targeted argument is indeed missing and so we'll get a, an error message like this so error in my verb so it's pointing in the right place hopefully and then it'll say you know expert is absent um but must be supplied so uh, there's a different default uh message here um which which is kind of nice so we're not going down to with chained errors so this is not getting executed at all instead we're we're um Signaling a like a an error condition even here, and then just stopping execution of the function. Um, so, at the end of the day, the error message is 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 a, is a bit more readable, right? There's not superfluous stuff that sends you looking in, in in a wrong and confusing direction. It's just getting straight to the point. Um, yeah. Let me see if there's more for checking. Yeah. Oh, and the, the nice thing that I, I was looking at, that I, I looked at this really briefly, is Whereas abort, um, let me see if, I, let's see if I can find abort after. Let's go to abort. So whereas with abort, one needs to provide the call, so there's no default. Um, with uh, with with checked required, there is right. So it's the caller and environment uh, that's provided by default. So you can kind of have a little bit more compact function here. You're not having to explicitly point it to um, the caller environment. The assumption is, you know, basically that this default is, is a sensible default. And of course, if like you need something else, you can use something else. So that's that's kind of nice that just with one magic incantation, you you get done what you, you want to get done. Um, uh, yeah. So now I guess we're shifting a little bit to two two other cases. So one one is the case that you were alluding to earlier, John, where maybe you want, or, or, or maybe or at the very least something related to what you're mentioning earlier. Like let let's let's say that you want to capture an error, um, and like catch an error, and then completely provide the user your own bespoke error message that's you know not giving them any information about kind of the context and the context within your function um uh, uh, where where the error was 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 signaled um just because you judge perhaps in that case that some low level error might be confusing for the end user and you want to give them something you know some more sensible error message right and this is maybe kind of a helpful example at least it, it kind of connected with me <clears throat> Is that you know if you're doing some HTTP request, probably you don't want to you know confuse people with a, in, you know, HTTP uh, status code or 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 maybe even depending on how your function is implemented, like some error message that's supplied by the API API that your your endpoint that you're hitting. And instead, you want to just give them some description of what the give the user some description of what the problem is, right? So that might be a, a sensible use case where where you want to do so. But at the same time, you kind of need to find strike this balance. Like, so whereas it's possible, and that's where we're going, like one needs to be cautious about going in that direction because you don't want, you know, in many, many cases, you wouldn't want to hide from the user context about how the error is occurring because it might prevent them from having a good trail to follow and understanding why the error arose and what they can do about it. Right. Um, so we need to kind of strike some balance between these these two concerns. Like on the one hand, not providing confusing error messages um, uh, that maybe provide too low level of details. And on the other hand, providing users with enough information that they can actually troubleshoot. Right. Um, so we'll just show an example here. Um, and I think I'll have a, like, a little side question for you at this point, John, because you, you strike me as someone who 
undoubtedly knows more about this than I. Um, so let, let's create another error catching function here. So in, in its form, it's very similar to what we've seen before with own scalar errors. Um, so we'll be looking at the caller environment because this will be an error catching function within another function. Try fetch uh, yet again. <clears throat> um, we've got a board right here, some error message. Um, and here, um, whereas previously we had a parent, we're, we're actually putting the parent as in A here. Um, uh, so now let's let's uh, let's put this inside of my verb. Uh, so we're going to check that the expression exists, and then we're going to have some new new error checking thing. We'll provide it this empty empty thing, and we'll see um, you know. Um, We'll see this error message error in my verb must apply a vector, right? So here we've kind of prevented the user from seeing like where things are actually really happening. We're just giving them this 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 error message. Um, so let's see. Um, yeah, with with an error message vector assert. Okay, so uh, right. So within this function. Um, Error message. So I guess normally we might see some error message coming out of maybe coming out of this. And I think here we're, we're basically uh, pointing up like one level to, to, to my verb, right? Um, so this kind of low level error is not being shown to the end user. Instead, we're just showing them this, this error message that we that we want that we want to show them, um, but what's useful in this in this in this example, uh, and this is where actually where I have the question, um, I suppose, is that even though we're kind of occluding, like we're, we're hiding, we're hiding, you know, where the error actually occurred, uh, in, in this particular case, we are making that information available on kind of the call stack. So if one does last error and kind of looks at the error component, one can still see, um, we, can, we, can, we can kind of see a little bit farther down the, the call stack because, um, uh, so whereas it's occurring here and we're seeing this uh, expra must be a vector, not an environment. Uh, so that's coming from this guy right here. So we can still recover that information if, if, if let's say a, a person really wants to look at the kind of the error, the error chain here. And there's a little backtrace that'll give you some additional information. Now, there's a little bit of hand waving here. It says, you know, in the snippet above, we stored it in the error field. And I, I started looking back at advanced R for <clears throat> the conditions. <clears throat> and at some point they were uh, custom conditions or hand link conditions. That's, I, I lost my, ah, here we are. Um, my place I wanted to look at is, so they said, you know, if you actually look at the conditions object in R, the, it, it's basically a list, like so many complicated things in R, it's just a list um, of stuff. And so here you've got a message and then you've got a call. And so somehow it seems like here, there's they're basically creating another field that's called error that then contains the, 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 like the condition, the condition objects like getting passed into the error, into the error field. Is my understanding, like broadly right, John? And, and if so, like, have, have you worked with this aspect of like condition objects, like adding fields to them? I think you're, you're muted, John. I am, I, I, I haven't, but this is the ab abort function error field, yeah. right? Okay, error argument. Yeah. And then they're passing the condition from try fetch, <laughs> uh, and so the the question first question I would have is is the condition object that try fetch returns exactly that same type of object that advanced R talked oh. about? <clears throat> I don't know. Um, I I bet it is, but I don't know for sure. And then, you know, and, and then so you're p passing it through to abort um, in that error field. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't worked with this. Um, 
you know, this section is definitely very useful because I have, I, like, I just started working with things like this and quickly got it working and didn't read every inch of this vignette, uh, which is basically, you know, it's like exactly what I'm working with. So it's kind of funny. Um, but yeah, I don't, I haven't done this. And it's okay. it's really funny because it's really close to exactly what I'm doing. So I might have to look back and uh, I, I still, <laughs> like, I still feel like the vectors checked are too strict in mm. it, when I've played with them it seems like they were like they it would um reject things that are fine like it should work that way right. like that's part of the whole thing with vectors is like don't coerce things um unexpectedly mm -hmm. but you know i do want to ex to coerce things when i expect it <laughs> like when i'm i'm saying yeah it's okay you can supply either one of these and i'll treat it as a character or you know right. that's the main one that i run into actually is Oh, you supplied a number. I can't treat that as a character, but it's like in this case, yeah, you can. You know, yep. just just use that number, please. Yep. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah, this is something I feel like I'm gonna have to come back to. I, I yeah. For, for for my own oh, part, I I never really got uh, comfortable with try catch. I guess I've used it once or twice, and I, I for, for me, it's I, totally I feel like agree. The, the, the stumbling block is always reading the 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 man file. <laughs> I, I I just find yes. it really difficult to parse. Um, the yeah, advanced, I didn't know about this. Uh, yeah. yeah, and I didn't know about this try fetch, which um, I like because it is, you know, it, it's taking one of those functions that is just kind of painful to wrap yep. your head around. And they did tried their own version. So this, um, this part worried me a little bit that they have the experimental badge. Uh, <clears throat> I just noticed that as I was clicking through the article today, but hopefully so it'll experimental. It'll, yeah just means mean the api like, might change maybe yeah um it doesn't seem like it would a lot but um it, it's what is on everything until it's either mm. stable well stable deprecated or superseded so experimental yeah. just means new it i i would not take so it's not questioning and questioning yeah, is yeah. the one that's scary to to use um, yeah. I think experimental is kind of a bad word, but a bad way of saying it. It, it mostly just means new, it seems like. Yeah. Um, very few things are stable. <laughs> like That's the tag <laughs> that is, uh, you know, that means they won't be changing the, or they at least don't plan to change the API at all. And so they wouldn't add an argument if they realized that they forgot something, you know, things like that. And yeah. That's just not realistic for most cases. So um, I'm comfortable using most of their experimental ones because almost everything is experimental. Mm -hmm. uh, questioning is definitely the one that you have to watch out for. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, it's funny because people freak out when they tag something as superseded, but superseded means it just won't change. Yeah. Like yeah. this other one exists. So now all that old code you have will work forever because they've superseded it. So they're not going to change it at all. So it's actually like the most stable. Mm. Well, actually, will superseded, um, <clears throat> I feel like I should know this, but will, will superseded receive bug fixes in, in, in future? Uh, like, yes, it when absolutely necessary. Like they try okay. to change a superseded function as little as possible. Got it. Um, so uh, like, you know, if there's some weird security thing or things like that, it would or if um if an r update broke it things like that uh but the idea is they do that when they have some old function that is too used to change um but that they kind of fundamentally want they're like oh man there's a better way to do this yeah um and so it is funny to always see people freak out at superseded and it's like no that means like they're taking care of you <laughs> like you're, you're you're freaking out because you don't want to change and they're like yeah go ahead just keep using uh, okay one. yeah I I, <laughs> I I i always off the rewatch hadley's talk a few <laughs> our studio comps ago about the the life cycle stuff yeah he had like a keynote about that the, the r studio global global i think it was 
because I, 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 I'm definitely one of those people that got nervous when I saw superseders. I, I, I thought it was sort of the, you know, ushering, ushering an unwanted guest out of the house, you know, um, I, <laughs> I, but I, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah. It's just one of those things that was, was created. People have come to depend on it and they just want to signal that there are better solutions that people should adopt if, if they can, uh, but right. That they're yeah. It's, coming. it's, it's kind of like, you know, if you have a bunch of old code that uses ggplot as opposed to ggplot2, that old code will still work because the whole ggplot function or package has been superseded by ggplot2. That's why yeah. he made, why he called yeah. it 2. No, yeah. you know, asterisk, I don't know. I've never worked with ggplot, uh, <laughs> the original, so I don't know if that code is still working flawlessly. <laughs> um, but in theory, it should be. And that was the whole idea is that he didn't, you know, people were using it, so he couldn't. Right totally replace it but he wanted right, to right. he wanted to throw it away and start over uh, same with hdtr versus hdtr2 yep. um that it's just it's a rewrite and so yep. it's been superseded but the old one still exists and does get uh bug fixes as needed so got it got yeah. it okay <laughs> all right so i guess i guess I'm on a tangent. I, I won't, I, you know no no it's fine <clears throat> long story short shouldn't worry about that that badge yeah yeah okay no, because it just seemed like this might be a more appealing version of uh, try catch for those cases in which I would want to use try catch. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I can't remember what it was, but I did just run, run into try fetch uh, separate from this club hmm. um, for the same kind of thing that uh, it's the stuff that I'm working with right now that is very close to this. It's kind of, it's, I, I'm, um, writing a package and kind of obsessively setting up all the argument checking and error handling nice. to the point that I'm like, I might just spin this off and then <laughs> be able to focus more on the package itself <clears throat> in the package itself. Cause so much of the yeah. package now is all about pretty error handling. Um, and it's just a slight wrapper on top of this vignette basically. Got it. So. Got it. Okay. Argument checking specifically. Got it. So, yeah, I'll have to. I'll have to follow that. That's 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 something actually. Like I, uh, I guess I'm uh, recover. I don't know if I'm recovering, but it, s s former slash current Stata user, and I. <clears throat> that's one thing Stata kind of does for you out of out of the box for for, mm -hmm. for all right, when you're creating kind of their equivalent of of functions is that it does some some error checking. And I initially I missed that in R. Um, but at the same time, you have the freedom to to write exactly. to write what you want. So it, it's it, it's just a trade. It's just trade off. Yeah, yeah. A lot of languages are are a lot more formal with the arguments, and yep. that the arguments have to be the right class or the right type or the right whatever they might call it. Exactly. And R is so wishy washy about it, which yeah, it can be nice. Um, and like I say. It's not that I want to really formally check, oh, this this was supposed to be an integer. I'm going to fail now. Yep. It's, yeah, is it a thing that will work here? Okay, <laughs> it's, it's a thing that will work. Um, but if it's not a thing that will work, I want to catch that right up front to tell right. people, hey, um, you know, I'm not going to bother doing all these computations because the thing you gave me up front will yep. not work. Let's exactly. catch that right away. Yeah. Exactly, or or worse yet, like not <clears throat> not even catch the problem and then error in a very weird way. Yeah, right. um, yeah. And then someone comes back and says your function, you know, your package doesn't work, your function doesn't work, and then you as the author maintainer, is kind of racking your brain, like why why doesn't it work? You know, right? <clears throat> yeah, because you can't really easily point to the source of failure. Um, yeah, but yep. yeah. Anyway, back I guess to the <laughs> to the main line. Um, so. So, so th this is kind of a way in which you, you can, uh, um, <clears throat> pardon me, um, basically have sort of high lower level errors from the user um, and provide them, you know, maybe more compact user-friendly error messages. But at the same time, by passing this, uh, the condition object to, um, the error parameter in a board. And incidentally, this is another thing I need to dig more deeply in. Um, I was looking at, at a board itself and it doesn't have an error. Uh, it's part of the dynamic dots here. So that was that was another thing I wanted to kind of look look at is how, how does this work, right? 
again, in this, it, there's they're kind of moving quickly, and I, I I didn't have the time to really dig into what's what's at a base level like really going on here. Um, so that's what you do. Um, anyway, this 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 setup allows you to kind of provide more compact, user friendly error messages while um, still providing the kind of the whole um, the whole stack, uh, you know, via last error to, to, to end users that really need to troubleshoot what's what's going on, including the author themselves. Um, right. And then the last big case study <clears throat> um, about providing context and error messages has to do with the thing I, I think I, I mentioned as an example at that the outset is, is, is functions that, that perform iterative actions um, so that end users can kind of understand in which, which let's say element of a list uh, is the problematic problematic error element that's 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 causing an error for the function, um, and and so here to kind of set things up, the the vignette creates a sort of Spartan version, a stripped down version of uh, of map. Um, that basically just takes um, you know takes some x's takes a function and then some some dots to pass on to the function very much like map um, it creates at the outset um, uh, a list that is of the same length as as the imp the x's the inputs and then just iterates over um, the, the x's going element by element and then you know performing that that function and then and then um, putting putting the results into the ith element of that that list and then returning, returning a list. Um, so, you know, if you do something like this, my, you know, providing a list and adding, you know, a function adding 100, you'll get back your list with 100, 102. Um, if, if you provided a list that, you know, has an, uh, a number and then uh, a character, you'll get an error message. But an error message is not super helpful because it just says this didn't work. Um, you can understand that it it didn't work in the add function. Um, you can understand that something is, um, you know, the one of the, one of the arguments provided is non-numeric. <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> but you know, imagining like you you don't have a list that you yourself composed or that you can easily inspect. You don't know where the error arose. <clears throat> so it'd be nice to if, if we could throw that information. Um, include that information in the error that's that's thrown. Um, so here's how to do that. Uh, the secret again and secret sauce is again try fetch. Um, so we'll, we'll just modify the map function slightly. Um, the setup is basically the same except that we're going to have a, um, the iterator i will just kind of start at zero. We'll have try fetch. We'll try to do the thing. Um, and if if there's a condition that's signaled, then we'll pass it um, to to a board here. Um, and what we'll do is we'll print uh, say problem while while mapping element whatever. And this is going to be I, um, so that we can have some sense of where where the element or where where the issue arose. Um, and if we do that, then this is this is the the error we get. Um, so error in my map useful problem while mapping element two. Very useful. So this is a bort, uh, and it's pointing us to the index where the problem arose. And then we're getting, as before, uh, this error from kind of the lower level operation, or, or from 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 add from the function itself. Um, right. So that's 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 useful. But here, you know, we don't really understand for where this is coming from uh, so much that uh, we've got caused by error, blah blah blah. Um, you know, maybe you don't know that it, it's it's associated with the add function. So let's let's add in one additional piece so we can we can understand where the, the error is coming from. Um, so we'll we'll create our our uh, this little function here um, that uh, if if something is not a string, and I guess this is maybe a a little bit like what you're what you're doing now now, John. Um, if it's not a string, then say you know x is x must be a string. Okay, uh, and and then fail. So we'll we'll pass that function. We'll use that function now, um, and uh, we'll see. You know, it's really nice that the the function itself uh, that's, that's 
doing the hard work and uh, it's you know being used each time for each iteration you know itself is providing some some errors which is nice so let's uh, have the same setup again same list but now instead of add we're going to have my function uh, here again we see my map uh, error in, in my map we can see where the uh, um, uh, the problem is so now we're flipping the script and saying we're expecting st uh, string uh, a, a string rather than number so it's it's failing at index one um and then we're seeing you know uh x must be a string which is the error that's coming from the abort inside of the the, the function um which is which is nice but one thing that's maybe a little bothersome is it says care uh, caused by error in fn right so from from kind of like the context of of the try catch that's uh, you know inside of my map, um, it's it's providing the name of the function, which from its perspective is the name of the argument dot fn, which is okay, but could be better. It would be better still if we could actually capture the name of of what's being passed to, to f to to dot fn, uh, and so we can do it in the following way. Um, Add a little bit more sophistication here. So first, we'll we'll basically you know um, capture, I guess, diffuse mm -hmm. uh, the the function right here. Uh, so we'll take the function, do substitute. So this is base base r, and we'll just okay. say this is the function function code. Um, you know, same setup as before for uh, setting up our, our our empty list. We'll do our iteration. Um, we'll catch our. These are the things that that, that change. Um, <clears throat> You know, we'll try to do the thing. Um, we'll try to catch, you know, if there's a condition signaled, we'll catch the condition. Um, and then if it's an error, uh, we will, uh, so if if it's a call, um, so is call, <laughs> condition is call, okay. Or we'll, all right, got it. So if, if, if in the condition object, the call is fn, namely like the name of the argument uh that's that's how the function itself sees it then we will substitute into the call slot of the condition object um what we've previously captured as as the as the functions uh functions code like the code provided to this argument oh, sorry, mm -hmm. this argument dot f um and then now, um, so this is all happening before we we. Uh, this is part of this function uh, for the condition, but it's we're, we're not yet to abort. So now we'll come to abort, uh, and we'll have our same error message as as before, and we're passing it the condition, which again now now the condition. This is a modified condition, so a condition that we've modified in this step by providing a different call um, than what is like the call from the perspective of the function, and then um, voila we get the following um so if we have again our, our list my function which is expecting everything as a string uh we'll have an error message to say uh, there's an error in my map there's a problem in element one because element one is non-string uh caused by uh error in my function so here we're we're looking at the contents of the dot fn uh um the dot fn argument um and then we'll see uh then we'll see the error that's from within inside the uh the my my function itself so pretty cool so these are kind of the tools that, you know basically use abort uh pass it the caller environment use try catch uh and then if you want to get really fancy on these things you can you can also like amplify the condition object so add things to it either i guess manually as we're seeing right here um or if you want to preserve some things that you're kind of hiding from the user uh this is the thing i really want to go back and look at in more detail is mm -hmm. you can you can you can kind of um um uh, somehow like pass the error to like an error slot within the condition object at least that's what i think i'm understanding here um yeah Pretty neat. yes neat vignette i i don't feel like i've mastered it far very very far from it but i it's given me enough that i i've kind of got some ideas like some names <laughs> and concepts i can hang a better understanding on in future and i definitely want to come back and dig into this because this is this is this is really useful stuff from my perspective i you know i, I remember for like the r studio conf this last last summer i i there are lots of workshops I wanted to attend, and I definitely wanted to attend like this session from uh, Hadley's uh, uh, package development masterclass. 
Um, I am uh, to better understand. I am taking that this this fall. Um, oh, really? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, looking forward to it for sure. Um, it's so it, you know. Side note on this: that the latest use this has um, used standalone, hmm. and they have this standalone types check that is in our lang so okay good yeah um is this the one oh sorry no this is this is old news um yeah uh just yeah go down to there and so you can tell it look in the r lang repo and grab this file that's called types check for example um and so they have their own thing where, and this is what they do. They said, this is how I found out about this because Hadley gave me advice to use this use standalone thing. And I was like, um, you know, this is while we were doing the use this club. I'm like, I've read every inch of use this documentation. <laughs> what the heck are you talking about? Use standalone. Um, he was like, oh, oops, that's only uh, in dev. But yeah, they so they use that to copy this file into the package rather than having a package that does the type checks because they want to like customize the error messages for every package. Mm -hmm. um, and so it starts the error, the file of error checking. Um, I don't love how it's implemented. <laughs> and so I'm not actually using it right now. You have to import all of Arlang in your package for this particular standalone to work right now. Um, and then there's just, uh, which I don't know if that actually matters, but that just seemed weird. Is, is um, this a bit like box? Uh, are you familiar with the package box? Um, I am not, but I'll bet it is. Because, um, well, I don't know if it's it's quite the same. Because here it seems like you're really just taking a file from another repo and including it in yours, if I'm, if I'm getting it. Whereas box is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Let's see box epsilon it's um remember barrett saying heath was really excited about this um well anyway it, it i guess i'll describe it in words and in, in the, in the time we have it is it, it, it in, in effect like you were able to no wait it's not analogous at all um <clears throat> no because for, for, for them it was basically more of kind of like a a way to import functions from other places in a way that's more like how other languages do so you know so it's a little pythonic i guess in in two ways like you could import individual functions from a package without um importing the whole package and you could also import them as an alias so um uh, you know your own kind of alias I, I think the additional thing that box had was something that maybe unrelated versus mo modules so it's sort of like functions that aren't quite functions anyway but but this this is so john is this like basically you're copying a file from another repo or yes and then it does some um like the file has a structure to it that says i need these packages and so it'll add those packages to your description in the package mm -hmm. that you're importing it into. Um, and it has some um, logic about if the standalone file that you imported updates, it helps you to apply oh. those updates. Okay. Um, huh. But um, yeah, I don't know what I think yet. Like I, I, I tried playing with it and um, the, it was missing a uh, little instruction to use um, or that you had to import Arlang in the uh, one particular version I was doing. Oh, um, see, yeah, that one. Um, and so um, it didn't work when I first tried it. And then um, I haven't gone back to it basically, but all this stuff, like it's all these check that, you know, checking inputs to make sure that yep. they're what you think they are. That is a thing that I am trying to get really nailed down and I've seen there are lots of things that try to do it. And I don't know, maybe I'm just a little weird, but I don't agree with any of them. Like, I don't think they quite do what I want it to do. 
Um, and it's an aggravating because I wrote a whole package that we used at my old job um, <laughs> that was closed source. And we do just like at the top of every function, you do the checks yep. of the arguments and it just worked. And um, it was like some really hairy coding that I think could be much cleaner now. Uh, but I want it to work the same. <laughs> I, so. I wonder, I mean, I, I'm not, this is very, not even quarter baked idea, but I was like, I, I wonder if it would, if if the R ecosystem should just have a package that has these things, kind of common common type checks. Um, so I don't, know if, I don't know if that makes sense because it, I, there may be I so much should. need or for specificity that maybe, it, anyway. Yeah, that's so, the fact that there are multiple versions of this and so far I don't like them <laughs> makes me think that um, not everyone agrees on how this should work in R. Um, but, you know, I, I basically, I want to use how R works that it will do these coercions. And so let it do that. But if the coercion changes it, um, don't like then you error so if if what they put in um is no longer like the coercion makes it act differently you know like um i i think if you send in like 1.1 and you're expecting an integer in a lot of places that'll just become one uh. and that's not okay but if you send in one or 1 1.0 uh and i'm expecting an integer okay yeah that's fine that stays the same. Um, let me check. I want to see if that is, if I'm remembering right, as integer 1.1. Yeah, as integer 1.1 just returns one with no error, no warning, nothing. Mm -hmm. um, in the base, you know, I don't this know. Is, this is what I was looking for. I don't know quite what this means, but integer. like in effect, you're wondering like, is it integer ish, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, Arlang as integer 1.1 does it. So Arlang as underscore integer does what I would want. Okay. Um, it's, uh, but actually it says error in as inter integer ish type yet. Like, no, <laughs> I wonder if I can capture that because, you know, I want it to say in the function where I called it, yep, yep, this happens. And so it's all this stuff that we were just talking about. Um, and actually, yeah, it's deprecated. <laughs> vec cast is what they want you to use. So if I do vectors, vec cast, and I do uh, 1.1, I think I see that. Um, yeah. Okay, let me copy paste into the chat. Um, so, so you're you're looking for something that's like I guess we talk about like predicates, right? You're looking for something that's almost like post post op check, you know, that I'm allowing this to be coerced. Or I don't know, I guess you can think of it in two ways. Like, you know how coercion works. And so you know that this thing won't be coerced to what you want or expect. And so you won't allow the operation to go forward. Or you could do the coercion, like you could do the thing and then check after, like post factum, whether the result conforms to your expectation. Like, the, is, is, like the, is the coercion that took place one that's allowable? Yeah. And see, this is where I'm like, oh yeah, this uh, vet cast, this is doing pre pretty much what I want. Oh, except like, why not coerce to a character? Why are you throwing an error when I try to coerce to a character? Just do it. Like if I'm telling you to do it, <laughs> a number should be able to be a character. Like that's not lossy. You yeah. didn't lose it, you know? Um. I mean, it technically was lossy because I sent it in as 1.0, which then just becomes one because R doesn't keep that the yeah, trailing zero. But anyway, 
the point you, being need, you that, need to have your own class your own vector class with its own rules and yeah that's... and nothing is quite doing what i want it to do there there are actually within the vectors package there are a couple of implementations of are you gonna do vec cast versus uh i can't remember there's another one that's similar but not quite exactly the same um mm -hmm. because People have different, you know, it, it, there are different use cases. In some cases, I want uh, I want you to coerce. In some cases, I might not want you to coerce. Yeah. Um, I can't think of a good example right now, but maybe. Um, and so just, I think that's why there isn't one package that does this. Yeah. Um, there have been a few that do this sort of thing. And, you know, like I said, I might write yet another one that does it the way I like it. Um, yep. It's but now I can do it with the Arlang errors exactly, and you know that was the big piece. Like that took so much work to to make that work in the old package that I wrote. Um, and now it's just it's easy. And then the other part of that was um, actually that package was why I learned S three because mm -hmm. doing all of these checks just as S3 classes or S3 methods um, made things way faster. Mm -hmm. But now I, I just did some checks and the things that used to be way faster don't seem to be way faster anymore. Mm -hmm. um, like it looks like if got faster or maybe um, like is character and is integer and those types of things got faster, I don't know, but uh, the using S3s um, as a simple if mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't seem to be worth it anymore, huh. um, which was interesting. So, it, which is nice because it makes this stuff a lot easier to write. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, so I like this vignette a lot, <laughs> is what all yeah. that comes down to. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the next next one is the I guess the follow up of making it look pretty. Is that uh, kind of where we're going? Uh, yeah, messages in CLI. Yes, and, and so yeah, CLI. Um, I've been using quite a bit. Um, since I discovered that it existed, um, and so I, I look forward to kind of formally seeing. It, it is interesting because I feel like all of this stuff. They've mostly nailed it down, but not a hundred percent. I'll bet if you go between different um, our lib and tidyverse packages, they don't all quite implement these things the same way because they are even with they just had they do spring cleaning every year where they you know let's implement the oh, got it. error message format and things like that, and they just did that. I don't think they 100% nailed exactly the same error message format across every package. Got it. Um, yeah. Because no, I saw I saw something similar exciting. to that, like the spring cleaning, like uh, for for our end. I think uh, uh, I saw some issue where Hadley was saying, like, why don't we just use pack for uh, installing packages, uh, which seems to be what Tidyverse is pushing instead of you know install packages. So. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Or like hydrating um, your package. Yeah. Or <laughs> and environment rather yes uh and that's a whole whole other thing because if you look on um in the help our general right now i just had a conversation with john mcpherson from or jonathan mcpherson from posit about rm stuff so uh yeah there are all these little little things that um cause surprising problems and that they're they're like really close to nailing down Yep. And I think getting, like, I think the, having these vignettes in our heads, just with the acknowledgement that things might still slightly change in their recommendations. But I think if we know what it is, like, we're in the same place their heads are. Yep. And so if they do change it, we can move more easily. Um, so, and it's the CLI stuff, is it's just really nice. It makes much your error messages i've started using cli for everything that i do error message why but I, wise, i'd but. always hesitated because it seemed like i had this wrong impression maybe wrong impression that it didn't work in all contexts or something like that and might cause some issues and uh, 
and then um, I guess it depends on maybe the terminal where you're you're running I, things. I um, don't think. No, I just not that was worried about the additional issues. dependency, but anyway, yeah, I think the end that result part, is is compelling enough that I'm fine with it. That and if you use like any other package that's worked on by the R Studio people they all use CLI exactly. now. Exactly. So you're importing it anyway. If, if you've installed Tidyverse, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So if, I mean, even if you, you know, only use our lang, well, you, you're also using CLI. So, yep. um, and yeah, there is the fact that it, it won't work. There are places where it won't work, but it fails gracefully. So mm -hmm. if you don't like, if you don't have colors available, then it won't do all the color stuff, but it will do everything else. So, um, it seems to be a like there's no reason not to use it as far as I can tell. Yeah. Um I but yeah, uh like it's I, I'm curious, you know, it's worked in here, but I, I might um want to do CLI next as the hmm. one to read through the documentation because while we're at it, um <laughs> like I don't know, I haven't looked at it. Maybe it doesn't really have anything interesting to read through. Um, it does have uh, several um, articles, you know, vignettes. And so uh, it might be worth reading through. And it's just, it's this, um, you know, such a fundamental foundational package that yeah. you want error messages to work no matter what package you're writing like writing good error messages is good. So exactly, exactly. Um, yeah. And, and, but that is this obsession that I'm trying to implement one little feature and I'm like, well, but I'm going to implement a whole suite of uh, <laughs> argument checkers and things because I got off on this tangent. That's right. I've the project, the project within the project, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. And so anyway, I'm trying to stop that and say, okay, maybe I'll, if I want to go further with this, I'll, do a separate project um, and maybe I'll apply for a, our consortium grant for that. Cool. So, um, Thanks so much, John. Looking forward yeah. to it. Yeah. All right. So uh, thank you for that. That was a, you know, it was a very good discussion. Exactly. Oh, and we are way over. I did yep. not notice that part. Okay. Um, all right. So, all right. I will talk to you next week. Okay. Right. Bye. Bye.